Hi, so this is relatively amazing, that's for sure. I went down to my local supermarket and they were uh, replacing their air conditioning units in a big pile of scrap. I came across two of these things. These are squirrel cage rotor fans. And you can see the squirrel cage just in there and there's a fractional horsepower motor there. It's actually a shaded pole motor. And um, they're just awesome. So <laughs> if you pull those to pieces, you, you'll get a ton of bits out of them. Obviously what I'm interested in is the squirrel cage rotor because of all that stuff we're doing on vertical wind turbines. Now I did say I got two of them. So I've disassembled one and there's the rotor out of it. That has actually had a clean because it was disgusting. It was covered in hair and fluff and grease and dirt. It was pretty horrible. This one is still pretty horrible. But I'll take it out and clean out the rotor. It's a bit of an unusual size. Uh, it's 13 millimeter inside diameter. So I broke apart the shaded pole motor drove off the um, shaded pole body to give me a 13 millimeter axle and it so happens I have some 13 millimeter diameter bearings which I'm going to be using. So I have to strip this one out and take out those bits and pieces and give them a clean again. Okay so there is the rotor that we want, needs a good clean, here is the absolutely filthy motor which we still got to disassemble and the involute housing, which I'm going to put to one side because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. Okay, so to get the motor apart, we need to do take off this support housing. Um, we do that just by drilling through the pop rivets and that will reveal the motor. There are three bolts and we can undo those. Okay, so I've taken the motor out of this cage, really. Now, it is a shaded pole motor, so I could just use the motor again for something else, actually. Obviously, it needs a clean, but after a clean, it could be used again. But I want the axle, remember, for something else that I'm thinking about. So I've undone the three bolts that hold it together. And we should be able to get that apart. There we go, bottom, there's the coil, the stator, and here's the rotor, as you can see, it's a pretty standard shaded pole rotor. Now, there's not a lot you can do with those. I have been thinking about doing something to make that a switch reluctant motor instead of a shaded pole motor, but as I say, I want the axle, I'll probably do that some other time. And the other thing is the stator. Now, that would make a great magnetizer stroke demagnetizer, so I'll pop that to one side and maybe do a project with that later. The next thing to do is to remove this, which is little more than whacking it hard with a hammer on here. Okay, so I haven't done anything particularly clever with these. Turns out they're made of aluminium, and all I've done is pick them out of the rotors, give them a clean, and temporarily glue them together. So got a bit of glue on there. The central spaces I'll leave it out, and I've put a bit of 14 mil pipe in there. It was 13 mil, so it's a bit awkward. So I drilled it out to 14 mil. And what that means is I can fit this central bar, which is a bit of 10 mil threaded rod, straight down the centre there, and I've turned the ends so they'll take a standard skater bearing. And why not? And it'll be a bolt on here, which will hold this whole thing together by clamping it down. Okay, so I've put a little foot on it temporarily just to get a sense of how it spins, really. And if I give it a hard blow, I can actually get that to turn a little bit just by blowing on it. So I'm going to put a hairdryer on it again just to get a sense of how it spins. Okay, that spins really quite freely. So it's wobbling a bit, so it still needs a bit of balancing. There's a bit of finishing up work to do to it, so maybe put some resin around it and give it a sand and then balance it. But obviously the magnets go here. And with this idea that we're exploring, this free spinning is really important. So putting together a simple rotor from some stuff that I've found. Okay, and that's it put together in its cradle. Now, there were two main inspirations for this video, actually. One of them was obviously that super find in the supermarket car park of those two uh, fans that we put together in this horizontal rotor. Now, obviously, it's horizontal. And it's really following a, a suggestion made by Rodney Jack and a couple of other folk that you get unidirectional winds in lots of situations, like uh, above um, roads, for instance. And apparently, I didn't know this, but Rodney tells me, but then the wind flows over a roof, it flows more strongly in one direction. So obviously, this would be a roofline thing. 
Now, when you're looking at the different varieties, obviously, of generators, we looked at horizontal and vertical and fan blade designs, then each of them have their own limitations and their own benefits for situations in which you would find them. And of course, that's the point of them. That's what you actually need. There is no one solution that fits all circumstances. You have different solutions for different circumstances, and this is as valid a solution as any. So we're going to take it out in the wind in a minute, and well, if there is a bit of wind, uh, and see if it spins. But it's obvious to me what you would do. Glue a load of magnets around here, and then a load of coils around there, and that's where your generation pickup is going to be. But let's get it into a bit of wind and see it spin. Okay, well that took no wind at all actually. It's going from 1.1 to 2.6 meters per second. Our little rotor is whizzing around beautifully. Because all we're doing is showing that the rotor actually rotates. I mean, we still need to put some magnets and coils on it. But as a horizontal design from things I found lying around, then it works just fine. Of course, I was lucky to find those in a car park, I'll give you that. But we could equally make those things in the same way that we've been making the other rotors that we've been making. But the key point here, I think, is not to get too carried away with your favourite design. There are good circumstances to use each of these designs, and they all have their various merits and detriments given the situation in which they find themselves. You need to take on board, if you can't take on board, there is no perfect design. Anyway, I thought I would share that uh, other type of rotor with you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.